Hey, this is Daniel Lee with ASU Newport's Adult Education. And today I wanted to go over one of the best online resources to try to help you pass the GED. Uh, the address is gedpracticequestions.com. And as you see, it breaks it down into math, science, social studies, and reasoning through language arts, or the RLA. Now these are the four subjects that you'll have to pass and the four tests that you'll have to pass to be able to pass the overall GED. And as you see, it has four practice tests per subject. Each practice test has 10 questions. If you click on one of these, you'll see it just starts right here. Let's, let's, let's do this one together. These are two excerpts. Now remember, excerpt is a portion or a part of a whole. So they took these two sentences out of the U.S. Constitution. Uh, the first one is Article 1, Section 8, the Congress shall have the power to raise and support armies, provide and maintain a navy, provide for organizing, arming, disciplining the militia. And Article 2, Section 2, the President shall be Commander-in-Chief of the Army and the Navy of the United States and of the militia of the several states. So it says, which fundamental principle of U.S. democracy do these excerpts reflect? And the answer is separation of power. So the Congress has the power to raise and support an army, to provide and maintain a navy, and to provide for the organizing, arming, and disciplining of the militia. However, the president is in charge of the military. He is, he is the one who commands the military. That's why he's called commander-in-chief. It says, Separation of power refers to the division of government responsibilities into different branches. The purpose is to prevent the concentration of power and provide for checks and balances. So you do not want the power to be able to raise a military and also command a military in one person. And that's how come it's separation of power. And one of the main reasons I like this resource is it gives you answer explanations. It explains the answer to you. So these are 10 questions. You go on to the next one. This right here talks about visual literacy. You'll have to answer it based on these line graphs. So gedpracticequestions.com is an excellent resource for you to be able to study and have as close as you're gonna get to the questions that are actually gonna be on the GED. So there's 40 math questions. 40 science questions, 40 social studies questions. There's 60 reading questions. There's the RLA essay for the reasoning through language arts portion. You will have to type out an essay. It doesn't count against you. It just really gives you extra points if you can do it well. So it gives you tips and strategies and also sample essays. And then there's more resources. One of the best things I like about this is the tips. So let's look at social studies tips. So it says you have 70 minutes to answer 50 questions. And it gives you these tips. Don't worry about what you don't know. Note any trends in data, tables, charts, or graphs. Remove choices that are contradicted by the given info first. Cause and effect counts more than dates and times. Familiarize yourself with economics vocab. So each one of these will give you tips to be able to pass the test. And that's why I like it. That's why it is a good resource. So this along with Aztec and any paper-based learning resources you have should give you all the skills and knowledge to be able to pass all four sections of the GED test. So please get on gedpracticequestions.com, go through all of these, make sure you look at the explanations, and I think this resource will help you a lot. Have a good day.